The importance of omega-3s. Your current diet is most likely high in omega-6 and low in omega-3, which can have devastating effects on your health. Today, we are going to talk about the benefits of omega-3s and why the ratio of omegas is so important in your diet. $25 billion was spent on omega-3 supplements in 2011 and was estimated to reach $35 billion by 2016. But why? Why are omega-3s so popular? First, let me help you understand what omega fatty acids are, and then a little further in this video, I'll show you the benefits. Omega-6, also known as N6, and omega-3, also known as N3, are two types of polyunsaturated fats. They are both defined as essential fatty acids because the human body cannot synthesize omegas due to the lack of desaturase enzymes. This includes lacking the enzyme omega-3 desaturase. Without this enzyme, we cannot convert omega-6 fatty acids into omega-3. These fatty acids must be obtained through diet or supplementation. This is the reason why fats are in my dieting protocol. Omega-3 fatty acids have a double bond, three carbons away from the omega end also known as the methyl group. Omega-6 fatty acids have a double bond six carbons away from the methyl group, hence the names omega-3 and 6. There are three types of omega-3 fatty acids, DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, EPA, icosapentaenoic acid, and ALA, alpha-linolenic acid. There are numerous types of omega-6 fatty acids. The most commonly known omega-6 is LA, linoleic acid, Linoleic acid is converted into GLA, gamma linolenic acid, which is then converted into arachidonic acid. Make sure you don't mistake linoleic acid for the omega-3 ALA alpha linolenic acid. Omega-6 fatty acids are needed for the creation of inflammation. Inflammation is needed in the body as a response to injury, but it can become an issue when there's too much inflammation, which Unfortunately, a vast majority of us have. If you are eating a standard American diet, your omega-6 levels are most likely higher than your omega-3s, which increases your risk for too much inflammation. This is because processed foods contain plant oils high in omega-6. Corn oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, and safflower oil. Check the ingredients of your potato chips. They are definitely in there, even in those healthy chips. These oils are unfortunately common in foods found in the health foods section. This is why I suggest making most meals from scratch as often as possible. Corn oil has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 49 to 1. Corn oil and other oils are part of the reason why the common ratio in Western diets is 15 to 1 and oftentimes higher. The problem is omega-6 and 3 compete for the same enzymes. Therefore, you should try to add in more omega-3 rich foods. Ideally, we should be consuming omega-6 and 3 as closely as possible to an equal ratio of 1 to 1. Equal parts yin and yang. A deficiency in omega-3 is much more likely than a deficiency in omega-6. This does not mean we should eliminate omega-6 entirely, as it is indeed essential, but we do need to try to decrease the consumption of it by eating organic whole foods. You should focus on adding more omega-3s into your diet since they are harder to find in most foods. Don't worry about your omega-6 levels getting low. If you're deficient in omega-6, you're probably not eating enough food in general and will have other deficiencies alongside it. It's nearly impossible to eliminate it entirely with a well-rounded diet. Remember, a deficiency in omega-6 is extremely rare, but a deficiency in omega-3 is not. The BMJ had a few things to say about omega-6 that I found to be very valuable information. Dietary advice about fats and the risk of heart disease is called into question on BMJ.com today, as a clinical trial shows that replacing saturated animal fats with omega-6 polyunsaturated vegetable fats is linked to an increased risk of death among patients with heart disease. They reported a study that was done to see if there were truly any dangers associated with a high intake of omega-6. An in-depth analysis of the effects of linoleic acid on deaths from coronary heart disease and cardiovascular disease has not previously been possible because data from the Sydney Diet Heart Study 
a randomized controlled trial conducted from 1966 to 1973, was missing. Wait, what? It was missing, but then someone found it years after the damage of suppressed education has been done. Of course, right? The results show that the omega-6 linoleic acid group had a higher risk of death from all causes, as well as from cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease, compared with the control group. These results prove that you should reduce the high omega-6 level by reducing the consumption of oily foods and favoring a whole foods diet rich in omega-3. A diet too high in omega-6 can cause you to be at higher risk for various illnesses such as inflammatory diseases, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and even Alzheimer's disease. Now, let's get to the long list of benefits from omega-3s. Healthy aging, proper fetal development, improves bone and joints, cardiovascular function, improvement of the mechanical function of the heart, decreases resting systolic and diastolic blood pressure, lowers serum levels of triglyceride, potentially reduces Alzheimer's because it was found to have reduced amyloid in animals, alleviates joint pain, improved cognitive function, improves immunity, supports brain and eye health, reduces ADHD symptoms, may alleviate depression, bipolar disorder, and other neurological disorders, reduces inflammation, aids in athletic performance by promoting the release of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells, leading to improved endothelial function, and more. All in all, omega-3s are extremely important, especially for brain and eye health. A lot of brain-related disorders can be relieved by omega-3 supplementation. It is commonly used for concussions, ADD, ADHD, and other learning disorders, bipolar disorder, depression, and even that pesky brain fog. If you have a sluggish mind or anything brain related, you may want to try omega-3s to help alleviate it. A study was done on rats supplementing their diet with omega-3. They found that omega-3s increased dopamine levels in the frontal cortex by 40%. It also increased the binding to the dopamine D2 receptor. If your children are experiencing developmental issues and behavior disorders, it may indeed be related to low levels of omega-3. If the mother didn't get enough omega-3s in her diet during pregnancy, the child could be at higher risk of brain-related disorders. Please consider omega-3s because children are the future and we want to make sure it's a good one. A friend of mine has a child on the way. I made it a point to ensure the mother is eating wild low mercury fish. Don't forget, the solid weight of the brain is 60% fat, so fatty acids are crucial to brain health. Due to the lack of the omega-3s in foods, supplementation may be needed for some people. With all of these benefits and deficiencies, it makes sense why it is sold worldwide and profits literally billions of dollars. High-dose supplementation of omega-3 can thin blood and cause diarrhea, so there is no need to take high doses unless recommended by your healthcare professional for very specific conditions. There is no recommended dietary allowance, but it is suggested to take about 250 to 500 milligrams, or at least eat two fatty fish per week. Most fish oil and krill oil supplements contain about 250 milligrams, and on the high end, about 1,000 milligrams. If you don't like the taste of seafood, then obviously it's best to take a supplement when you can. Although fish is the best source, there are some plant-based foods that contain omega-3s, such as flax oil and chia seeds. There is an ongoing debate about whether or not these plant-based oils are utilized, as well as seafood, and for a relatively good reason. The body is able to convert some EPA and DHA from ALA, the short-chain omega-3, but studies show the conversion rate may be limited. The conversion is approximately only 6% for EPA and 3.8% for DHA. Not only that, the conversion rate is drastically reduced by 40 to 50% when the diet is rich in omega-6. Thus, the reason for suggesting seafood sources over plant-based sources. Some omega-3 food sources include flaxseed oil, chia seeds, grape leaves, kale, broccoli, green leafy vegetables, mackerel, salmon, tuna, oysters, and more. Visit my website for a full list of foods with omega-3s. The link is in the description below. The full list is also in my book.
Well, I'll leave it at that. I know my viewers are smart and now know how important omega-3s are, so I really don't feel the need to talk any further. Do you take fish oils or any other omega-3 supplements? Have they helped you? Let the community know in the comments below. If you decide this is a supplement you'd like to try, check the description below where you can find Brandon Goji approved Omega-3 supplements that you can purchase. Be sure to hit like on this video like your life depends on it, and subscribe to my channel if you're new. I upload numerous health videos that you won't want to miss. As always, I'm Brandon Goji, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, stay motivated to urban survivors. Is that a creepy outro?